So good afternoon. Uh, this is really, so the movie is played before. I guess it's appropriate uh, after the last panel. I would say, Dan, it's the Rocky Horror Picture Show or Back to the Future, so just quickly. Anyway, um, so venture capital and uh, crowdfunding. This, as I said, this is Back to the Future. I was CEO of Instanet. I don't know, anyone heard of Instanet here? Okay, so Instanet was the first electronic trading platform that competed with NASDAQ. My office actually was downstairs and faced the NASDAQ billboard. So there was always kind of a red dot on my head. So, I mean, what's eerie to me is how similar uh, crowdfunding evolution is to the equity evolution. So, I mean, it really is eerie. So, just quickly, you probably can't see this, but the evolution of trading was trading done on the telephone, right? Credit cards, if you will. Uh, orders executed on the floors of the exchange, right? Going into a bank or via mail. Uh, in 85, electronic market share was zero, basically. No electronic trading. And uh, by really now, it's well over 40 or 50 percent. I hate the word disruptive. Can anyone come up with a different word? change the operating system, but I don't want to hear disruptive anymore. Anyway, the first thing that developed were the electronic exchanges, right? And then what you need are, really you need, I hate ecosystem too, but I'm going to say ecosystem. Um, what you had were the exchanges. First, the electronic <laughs> exchanges developed which are the equivalent of the portals, right? The exchanges. But you don't want the lapel mic, it's feedback. <laughs> All right, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, so first you had the exchanges, which are the equivalent of the portals, right? The angel list, the sofis, the peer-to-peer -peer lenders, the fundrise, realty mogul, et cetera. So, and what you needed on top of those exchanges to make the market more efficient are a number of things. So you needed people who, brokers, who could basically access the different liquidity pools and help clients. Traditionally, these were just voice brokers who you would give an order to and they would go find the right liquidity pool, so to speak. What you also needed, though, and what developed were consortiums of people who owned exchanges. So the people with the liquidity or the order flow developed ownership of the exchanges, and I think we're going to see that more and more. Uh, you saw dark pools, which are getting a lot of attention, but I think you'll see those in the crowdfunding space. You saw order management systems, portfolio management systems, algorithms, which you're starting to see. For example, Orchard and Luan's uh, fine firm, uh, Crowdnetic, are really sitting on top of these portals. You also need market data, right? How do you trade without efficient and effective market data? So when there's eight peer-to-peer -peer lending firms, which there will be, no matter how big the top two players are, there'll be others who will put price compression on, um, if you will, to benefit investors. People will get lower costs. You need market data. You need trading cost analysis. So you really need to understand how much the trades are really costing. So in the old days, when you traded a NASDAQ stock, people thought they were trading for free. There was no commission. The problem is the spreads were about 50 cents. So you were uh, paying 50 cents commission to trade those stocks. So my point really is, and I know we have a short period of time, is really this is what I would say 
the landscape looks like. It's not perfect by any means, but you have the exchanges, you have the market data providers, you have the tools that sit on top of the exchanges. These are incredibly expensive, right? I'm not saying they're not going to be increasingly valuable. Uh, they're incredibly expensive. They're doing a great job. I would argue the peer-to-peer -peer lending firms are really, I would say, half exchange, but turning into just loan originators. And it'll be interesting to see how the market prices them when they go public. Again, I'm not making any uh, <laughs> stock picking either way, but I'm just saying that uh, there will be more competition in all of these uh, portals for all of these asset classes. The great thing about this whole eco <laughs> system is equities are a small asset class, and equities generate about approximately $100 billion in market cap in the market, right? If you added up the market cap of all of the entire technology stack, so to speak. These asset classes dwarf equities, right? Peer-to-peer -peer lending. I don't know if anyone's in the room. A trillion dollars, I think, uh, the total addressable market. Uh, real estate is huge. So the opportunities are fantastic. What I'm what I am looking to invest in and have invested in are uh, the exchanges. There's yes here. So the electronic exchanges, uh, lots of activity. There's very, very little activity in the technology stack, right? There's only a few players who are providing market data. I'm not just saying that, Luan, because you, it's your, yeah. <laughs> Um, uh, the orchards, again, of the world are starting to build the technology stack. So the portals in other asset classes, right, beside peer-to-peer -peer lending, venture capital, uh, college loans, uh, real estate, and on and on, there will be more asset classes and more portals. I just don't think the other asset classes are going to have the same opportunity. They're just not that big a market, right? Total addressable market. So I know I have limited time, and I'm happy to take a couple questions, but this is what I'm investing in or looking to invest in. And the opportunity is there's not even startups in some of these areas, right? So I'm going to look to incubate. Uh, in the technology stack. So I hope I've given you a little bit to think about or not think about. So i um, happy to take some questions. Yeah. Hey, can you explain your business model? I don't, I'm not sure we're speaking the same language, really. We're a nonprofit trade association. Okay. Over 40,000 right. monthly. Yeah. Okay. And I think you will, right? If you, yeah, no, I, I understand. I guess what, what I'm saying is wherever it fits in the marketplace, uh, if there's a real need, so there was a real need for a Schwab and an electronic brokers that gave direct access to the marketplace, there's a need to put people on the same playing field and give equal access, right? That,
Yeah, I mean, it, it's not just technology. I'm sorry, I, I didn't articulate myself clearly. Market data, for example, is we're sitting in the skyscraper that was largely built off of market data and news and other things. You can make a lot of money. So it's not just technology. I'm just saying what investors need are all of these solutions. Or maybe some investors need different solutions in different ways. So a hundred billion dollar hedge fund or a ten billion dollar hedge fund needs something fundamentally, not fundamentally different. They need a lot of stuff in the middle that I would argue individual investors don't need. Like sophisticated order routing systems, portfolio optimization engines, etc. Does that answer your question? Okay. Okay. Anything else? Or Yeah, you're, you're going to be available later outside if anyone has any questions or wants to get into this part. Um, and thank you. Thank you.